Good afternoon and a special welcome to all the awardees. It's good to be with you in person. Thank you all for taking the time to be here at an especially busy part of the semester to celebrate the important and joyful work that takes place in the Kofi Annan Institute for Global Citizenship. Integrating our understanding of the local with the global in ways that amplify scholarship and the lived experiences and knowledges of people across the globe is an integral part of the IGC mission. As educational institutions, we are charged to provide students with tools they will need to engage with the world. No simple task. This type of engagement requires intellectual, sociocultural, and political tools and a deep understanding of the issues at hand. This afternoon, we will honor students and community partners who have been engaging in this work with awards from the Civic Engagement Center. We will also hear the 2022 recipients of the Global Citizenship Student Award as they describe their engagement over the last four years with global citizenship. It is my honor again to welcome you to this celebration today. Thank you for being here. certainly great to be here and uh, the room is already an expression of collaboration right and coming together and being you know in the intersections nothing would happen in the IGC or in this college without this kind of relationship with this relation relationality so I really really want everybody to give themselves, you know, appreciation for that. Because collaboration is not usually something that becomes visible to people. It is very invisible work. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of re-examining. And I think that what we are going to hear today from our students is an invitation to think critically, to re-examine, what the Institute means, what global citizenship can be or could be in the future, mm -hmm. and to imagine or reimagine the world in different ways. So, but I do want to share with you because I think that this is not a statement that has been shared or read uh, extensively by many people here at McAllister. And it is a statement that has to do with how uh, everybody working at the IGC, the different offices coming together, re-examine and reconceptualize their work. Not only as what are the topics that we focus on, but what is our practice? What is our methods, right? So let me please read and share with you what the IGC was in the process, I guess, for the past four years mainly, mm -hmm, uh, under the leadership of Dona Maeda and working collaboratively with every center and every program. So the Anna IGC, Institute for Global Citizenship, strives to be collaborative, a collaborative space for reimagining what a world that is focused on equity and justice could look like. In order to move towards such a vision, we work with students, staff, faculty, and members of communities within and beyond the campus. This also includes not only domestic but international communities. To consider their complexities in terms of their context with local, national, and international systems, and histories of power and inequality. 
The spaces we cultivate require us to critically reflect on our positionalities in these contexts, and then work with others across differences to impact social change. We have to start thinking about where we are and what our contexts are. Where do our histories begin in order to engage with other histories? We build on individual and collective strengths, values, and commitments as we engage this critical reflection and self-exploration. We foster opportunities to develop skills and knowledge via experiential learning and by nurturing meaningful collaborative partnerships across campus and in communities. As we learn and build collaboratively with community partners, we recognize community knowledge, knowledges that expand traditional notions of scholarship and expertise and honor long histories of work for social change. In this way, the Coffee and Nun Institute for Global Citizenship and its partners explore the confluence, the intersections of multiculturalism, internationalism, and community engagement through the lens of equity and justice to co-create spaces of mutuality, agency, and transformative change. Welcome everybody, everybody, and I hope that we can continue celebrating our students today. Thank you. Just so I name them, mm -hmm. although everybody will step here and describe what each program is about, uh, one of the things that you should know is that the Dean's Office um, is, is, is sponsors the annual International Roundtable and the Global Citizenship Award, which some students have got awards today. Um, and what I want to alert you is that this year's full 2022 uh, International Roundtable is titled Decolonizing on the Impossibilities of Decolonizing Knowledge and Power. We have amazing students that student-led proposals already. So I really hope that you begin those conversations early on and do not wait for the International Roundtable to happen in October 2022. Uh, then we will also hear from the Center of Study Away and the Civic Engagement Center, International Student Programs, and we have on campus other other um, departments and centers we are closely collaborating with, which are the internship program, of course, the Department of Multicultural Life, and the Siri Center for Scholarship and Teaching. Okay, without further ado, I think Cedric is next. <laughs> Can you hear me? All right, wonderful. So let me say good afternoon to each and every one of you and extend to you a handshake and a smile. My name is Cedric McClure, he and his, and I am the Associate Dean and the Kofi, an Institute for Global Citizenship and the Co-Director of our Civic Engagement Center. And I have the awesome pleasure of announcing the next few awards from the Civic Engagement Center and from the Minnesota uh, Campus Combat <laughs> Organization. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read um, the citation uh, for the award. I'm gonna have the recipients join me and uh, I'll read their citation and take a picture of members from the uh, Civic Engagement Center and then we will uh, proceed. So our first uh, recognition is the George Stanley Author Prize for community service, which was established by Andrew William Arthur, class of 1983, and his father, Robert Arthur. Awarded to a graduating senior who best exemplifies McAllister's historic tradition of service to the community and who is in good academic standing. This year's recipients include Angela Wynn, Matt.
Matthew Wilkinson and Shui Gu. If I can have those three, please join us. As they're doing that, I wanted to start by first saying a, a quick word about Angela Lynn. Angela is a double major in international and Asian, Asian studies. She has functioned in various multifaceted roles that illuminate her service through organizational governing bodies. As the campus relations chair from the Calus's Quest Page Quest Page organization, Angela created informative college access materials that raise awareness among BIPOC, first-gen, and low-income students with seeking scholarship to help finance their college education. While chair of NCSGs, which is McCallus College's Student Governance <laughs> Student Organization Committee, and at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, Angela advised McAllister student organizations on how to engage with McAllister students that were both on and off campus. Her commitment to serving the most vulnerable among us led her, led her to promote a, a homeless day at the Capitol within the context for advocating for housing policy. After graduation, Angela would pursue her desire to educate by teaching English in rural Indonesia as a Fulbright Fellow. Congratulations, Lord. <laughs> Next, we have Matthew Wilkinson. <clears throat> Matthew is a linguistic and anthropology double major. He is a champion and advocate for community engagement as evident by him vigorously recruiting his fellow classmates to participate in the Rondo community in the Rondo Conversation Circles. As a Davis Project for Peace recipient, he recorded nine episodes of a podcast series entitled, entitled Karabundi, or Welcome to Minnesota in Swahili. And this was done in collaboration with a local Congolese community partner to raise awareness about the plight and predicament of the Congolese community in the Twin Cities. In addition, to the podcast series, Matthew created an English class tailored to meet the needs of the Congolese refugees community and has recruited about five students to continue that class. Matthew was intentional about getting engaged in community beyond the Mac bubble and consequently became a bridge between the campus and the broader community in a mutually beneficial manner. Congratulations, Matthew. Next, we have Shui Yi Wu, a computer science major and Asian studies minor. She was instrumental in bringing together various voices and interests across campus that hold civic engagement and multiculturalism in loving harmony. As a college access issue area coordinator, she has co led a visioning process within the Civic Engagement Center to infuse racial justice and equity into his programs, policies, and practices. Shi Yi also invigorated OAK, which is the Hmong student organization, by most notably by hosting a Hmong New Year celebration on campus that hosted over 300 members from the McAllister and the local Hmong community. In our numerous activities and engagements, it is abundantly clear that Xu Yi is a genuine pace setter who leads by example to create equitable and lasting change. Congratulations. Okay. All right. So I'm going to ask that the recipients stay just for a minute. And I'll announce the next uh, award recipient, which is the Frank and Molly Stuhl Prize for Civic Engagement, which is an award given to a graduating senior 
with distinguished work in interdisciplinary studies in physical, mental, and emotional wellness, who is active in community service or working with the elderly and planning a career dedicated to helping others. We are pleased to present that win with a super prize for civic engagement. That can be joined. with a community global health concentration. He embodies a low-key, humorous, and engaging leadership style, which has made him a supportive Bonner Community Scholar and Environmental Studies peer mentor. In both of these mentoring capacities, that has provided his peers non-judgmental, personal, and academic advice that empowers his mentees to pursue their hopes and aspirations. In his role with Minnesota Community Care, that helped create a district-wide advisory board for St. Paul Public Schools. That provided a platform for youth to directly engage in a campaign to educate themselves about nutrition and therapy. That deeply believes the most effective way for youth to learn is through the direct community engagement. He will be working as a medical assistant at a local a health clinic in the Twin Cities. After he graduates, to gain some clinical experience before he pursues his goal to become a family medicine physician or a pediatrician. Congratulations, Matt. Next, we have the Minnesota Campus Compact President's Student Leadership Award, which recognizes an individual student or a student organization that models a deep commitment to civic responsibility and leadership, evident by initiative, innovative and collaborative approaches to addressing public issues, effective community building, and integration of civic engagement into the college experience. Please join me and congratulating Alyssa Rauschenberger for this award. <laughs> Alyssa has been deeply involved in the local community throughout the past four years at McAllister and has demonstrated significant leadership in supporting other students to engage in economic justice issues. Alyssa has been the housing, work, and food justice issue organizer in the Civic Engagement Center for the past two years. In this role, she has built strong relationships with a myriad of community partners and has fostered McAllister's Habitat for Humanity student organization, demonstrating significant leadership in keeping students involved and connected throughout the pandemic. Congratulations, Alyssa. The next Minnesota Comeback Award is the President's Civic Engagement Leadership Award, which recognizes a member of the faculty, administration, or staff, or for a group, e.g., advisory committee, task force, project team that has significantly advanced the campus's distinctive civic mission, performing strong partnerships supporting other civic community engagement, and working to institutionalize culture and practice of engagement. It is my honor, my honor and privilege to recognize the council staff member, Hannah Dinko. experiences have all focused <laughs> around the education and empowerment of marginalized communities in the Twin Cities. She has lived out a commitment 
most recently through mentoring several BIPOC student leaders to organize, to organize rather than mobilize, in the wake of the murder of George Floyd and the police shooting of Dante Wright, as was evidenced in her facilitation of the college of student protests. Activism in higher education in the United States. Plenary session, which was plenary session, excuse me, I had this right, panel that had joined the fall 2021 International Roundtable. Anna is also currently the co chair of New School for African American Thought and is working, to, working on strengthening college connections with Ramsey Middle School. Congratulations again, Anna. Campus Contact Award for the community partner recognizes a community based partner or organization that has enhanced the quality of life in the community in meaningful and measurable ways and has engaged in development of sustained reciprocal partnerships with the college or university, thus enriching, enriching educational as well as community outcomes. We are fortunate to be joined today by Sydney Stewart, representing the East Side Freedom Library. The East Side Freedom Library is a vibrant hub for community life on the East Side of St. Paul. East Side is the best side. Uh oh, I might have a battle here. <laughs> And the Eastside Freedom Library builds solidarity and understanding with the sharing of stories of immigration, organizing, and mutual care. The Eastside Freedom Library, founded in 2013 by two longtime McAllister professors, is a key community partner for McAllister's classes. Off campus work study positions, internships, and faculty and staff development. Over many years, it has formed key connections between McAllister and Eastside neighborhoods, and it has inspired the model mutually beneficial collaborations and projects that are created with the community. Congratulations. Just a moment before 
he joins me at the podium. Um, Juan is majoring in political science with minors in Spanish and sociology. His senior capstone was titled Racial Capitalism in the Roots of Affirmative Action. It should also be mentioned that Juan recently spent in excess of 24 hours in travel so that he could be present with us here today. As someone who has worked with Juan several hours a week over the course of the past four years, I have come to rely on his steady presence, thoughtful reflections, and deep ability to build community. And it is a true honor to share a few brief remarks as introduction. Juan defines global citizenship as someone who strives for working towards social justice and liberation within our global community through a collective process of reflection, action, and transformation on the ground and from the bottom up. One thing to know about Juan is he's seemingly not wired to focus on self. His every action, from the internships he's held, each one paid forward by identifying peers who could also benefit from his experience in working places like the Minnesota Timberwolves, J.P. Morgan Chase, U.S. Bank, the Capital Pathways Program, and with community partners like Clues, to his unique style of shared leadership through programs like Bonner Community Scholars and student groups such as the Men of Color Collective in LSU. Juan makes circles bigger with a unifying voice for transformation and change, no matter how strong the countervailing forces may be. As one of his nominators shared, Juan is not willing to let the college rest on its laurels, but has shown himself to be part of a community on campus that pushes McAllister to live up to its ideals. Juan's a lived example of global citizenship from the ground up. He's intellectually curious, passionate about social change, and relentlessly hopeful that a liberatory future for all is possible. Of the many memories that I have of Juan, there's one in particular that I keep coming back to, where we were on a porch in New Orleans and he asked for a photo with Cedric and I. Juan is a brilliant photographer. It was at the end of a vibrant, life-giving, yet exhaustive week considering education, community, and cultural survival through various site visits, community engagement projects, and conversations with local leaders, activists, and scholars. Juan had posed several deeply thoughtful questions throughout our experience, and I knew he had been deeply considering what direction he might take at the midway point of his first year of college. And there was something about capturing that particular moment to look back on that quietly signified that Juan was all in. And I could not wait to see what he was going to do. Knowing whatever the path, his brilliance would be well-placed and the impact significant. It has been a gift to witness firsthand Juan's influence on individual, programmatic, and institutional levels in these three and a half years since we posed for that picture. As many of you here today know, we are a better, deeper, stronger, and more joyful place for his leadership and global citizenship. Please join me in welcoming Juan to Which has been commemorated by many 
inspiration and true leaders of Mkhalas who have come before me, such as Chai Razimini Bobu, Ignacio Musa, and Arne Zanibi, who I have learned so much from. The desire for global citizenship continue, leadership continues to be fulfilled by Mkhalas student leaders who are critical of their surroundings and continue to uplift and inspire us all. This room is filled with them, and I'm curious to call each and every one of you my community. When Ruth told me she was going to nominate me, I thought it was honestly a joke. Because if you'd asked me first year, I'd be up here right now seeing this beautiful gesture, I'd have to say, uh, would you smoke him? <laughs> um, but it truly has been a process, a process where I was blessed to have been mentored and inspired by so many in this room, as I mentioned earlier. As I see you all across, please recognize that this celebration isn't just a reflection of who I am, but a reflection of the guidance, love, and inspiration you and many others have transmitted not only to me, but also many others in this room as well. When I was prompted with the question, how do you define global citizenship, I really thought it was some bullshit verbiage that McAllister made up to make themselves feel good. <laughs> but in reflecting on my journey, I was able to come up to the realization that this is all global citizenship. It is a collective process and practice that evolves over time. A global citizen, as Ruth had said, is someone who strives for social justice and liberation and community through a collective process of reflection, action, and transformation on the ground with a bottom-up approach. In my journey, community has been at the center of this process. For my hope for a future, without social inequality it depends on the collective power and love we spread among us. A major part of my journey has been with the Bonner Community Scholars Program. This community plan with the need to see the change through a reflective and nurturing manner. One of the many enriching memories that the Bonner Program provided me was with our New Orleans Community Learning Course from first year. Through the lens of education, community, and cultural survival, we had the opportunity to learn and engage with local leaders. This is a transformative experience that allowed me to understand the importance of cultural learning. Our community engagement in New Orleans allowed me to reflect on myself as a change agent through the community building process and serving in community. At the end of this learning experience, I came to question all systems of power and began to really reflect on my own community and experience in Little Rock, Arkansas. At a young age, we were fed the Little Rock Nine milestone of integration and painted a post-racial image of society through miseducation. Instead of critically learning our community's history, culture, and achievements, we learn the same prejudice curriculum as white students. Being a Mexican-American man in the South, you constantly experience the social inequalities, exploitation, and xenophobia. But despite these issues, I realize that in order to avoid dominance, we must create spaces in which we have to actively honor and spread pedagogy of liberation. This reflective and learning and enlightened experience laid the foundation of how I conceptualize and practice global citizenship. In creating space and building community on campus, I had the privilege and opportunity to be one of the leaders of the Men of Color Collective. This role, this role allowed me to not only be reflective and understand the gender dynamics we live, but to begin the action process of understanding and spreading healthy masculinity. Acknowledging that my actions have implications on those around me and how women are perceived and treated. As global citizens, my fellow leaders, and I take it upon ourselves to create a safe space and sense of belonging for men and non-binary folk of color. It was obvious to us that dealing with a diverse and multicultural group, we had to ensure we, we recognize our own positionality and intentionality using a grassroots organizing approach. With the uprising in the Twin Cities after the police murder of George Floyd, alongside the global pandemic, we knew that as the world's needs were changing, our focus had to change as well. We made a collective shift to provide support through relationship and community building in order to provide a virtual space and community where we could discuss our concerns in a loving, nurturing, and redemptive manner. Through this collective and reflective action, we were able to strengthen the bond amongst men and non binary folk of color on campus. The mentorship and love that blossomed from this collective inspired me to continue applying this collective process of transformation off campus. At our local nonprofit organization, 
got a crew is we made us like you know made us in Servicio. I had the opportunity to work alongside and be mentored by incredible Latino trailblazers such as Angelica Klebic, who's in the audience right now. I was able to provide resources and knowledge and knowledge to Latin students both domestic and international about how they can become more civically engaged in their communities. Seeing myself within these students and understanding my own struggle and being able to walk into the doors of higher education, I was really in love with who's is always of empowering and supporting Latinx high school students to bridge the gap of higher education through this formative change. Alongside my fellow Clues mentors, I was also able to organize and facilitate our 2021 Youth Latinx Conference, a conference where high school students and college students were able to learn about their strengths, engage with Latinx professionals from Minnesota, and explore future career paths. I wanted to duplicate their framework of collective transformation and cultural learning and integrate that into the McAllister community. For me, community has been the essence of my development and approach to global citizenship. This past summer, outside of the Latinx student population on campus, was missing the sense of community and collectivism as a group. They enacted status by the long they fostered this notion to establish a new Latinx cultural organization that would strive to create a space for Latinx students to explore and reclaim their identities, learn from each other, and foster a sense of belonging and community. Being a senior and seeing the rise in demographics of Latinx students, I wanted to ensure that our current and future Latinx students at McAllister could have a sense of home, away from home, and a predominantly white institution. Alongside the collaboration of one of the dopest people I know, Rio Soriano from class, the class of 2024, we found we found the Latinx Student Union or LSU, and it truly has been a transformative experience for us all. In our first semester, we were able to create programming centered around culture, pride, and community building. With continuous mentoring, empowerment, and investment in each other's dreams and aspirations, this organization will continue to make a difference in the lives of not just Latinx folk on campus, but Latinx folks all around the world. With my passion for collective liberation and hope for a brighter future as a global citizen, I'm personally committed to being community, working community, and be challenged in community. I am not perfect, and I'm pretty sure none of us are here, but that is why growth and reflection is a major element of this collective process that cannot be forgotten. My journey is a testament that as the African poverty goes, it truly really does take a village to make a child. I can honestly care less without disrespecting. If my name was on this plaque, for me, the opportunity to mentor and water the seeds and see them bear fruit is my greatest accomplishment. My desire is to continue creating and imagining spaces where collective power and radical love can blossom. A place where rise a person with a community and space where rise a person with the ability to engage with community. Communities are home to hundreds or even thousands of people, but a home is only as good as the people who live in it. Each aspect is crucial in the creation and survival of communities to have a space and be able to name it a place. The people in that space define what becomes of it when we all deserve a place in our communities. As Emiliano Zapata once said, El mundo que queremos es uno donde quepan muchos mundos. The world we want is a world with many worlds. Thank you and much love always.
concentrating in community and global health. She is an emergency medical responder. She's headed to, um, into life as a physician in the future. When I think of Maya, I think of this gracious, calm, indomitable, and serene force for change. She is unafraid and open and attuned to recognizing the complexities the violences of the places that we inhabit. At the same time, she believes deeply and profoundly in the good that can come. And Olga, you mentioned collaboration. And Juan, you mentioned practice. And Maya embodies both of these principles. I am ever admiring of her work in groups that have um, strived to make spaces at McAllister better, whether that be um, individual departments, academic departments, whether that be the science um, and math spaces, the STEM spaces at McAllister more broadly, whether that be radically accessible, inclusive classrooms and pedagogies, and whether that be healthcare spaces where immigrant voices are centered. In all of those spaces, Maya listens, she gathers people, she takes great notes, <laughs> and she keeps excellent records, and she moves the process along, making it that collaborative practice of transformative change. Maya embodies and appreciates the intersections of identities that make up her being and the beings and the presences of the spaces that we all inhabit. And she is ever respectful of all that she doesn't know, that we don't know, and how we can make space and give grace to one another with the confidence that we will come up with a better way forward. When I think of global citizenship, Global and local are so intermeshed in everything we do. You know, in the cup of coffee I might drink in the morning, to big thoughts I might think, I don't actually think big thoughts anymore, but a small thought that I might think later in the day that's, you know, very up there and academic and connected, it's everywhere. And I cannot think of someone who is walking into this next chapter of your adventure, equipped to take on the complexity, to appreciate the beauty, and to fight for change in our connected, beautiful, complicated world. Maya, congratulations. Um, I just want to say that I'm incredibly grateful for this award and most importantly for everyone who has mentored me and supported me throughout my time at McAllister. Many of you in this room have shown me the power of using your voice, the importance of active listening, and overall what good leadership is. Um, and because of all of you, I was able to learn that a global citizen is someone who listens to understand um, and has a desire to engage with and learn from the communities around them. A global citizen must also take risks and step out of their comfort zone to truly engage in a meaningful way with members of our society and tackle issues that concern everyone. So one of the most transformative early experiences I had at McAllister where I realized what global citizenship meant to me um, happened at the end of my sophomore year. Um, I'm pre-med and was very eager to take STEM classes at McAllister. 
However, as I took chemistry classes, I noticed that many of my really incredibly intelligent friends received grades that did not reflect the work that they put into their classes. Um, and some even ended up feeling like they didn't belong in STEM. Um, and I, I personally share those feelings at many points um, at my time at McAllister. And at times I even thought I wasn't cut out for a life of medicine. But at the end of my sophomore year, a chemistry major, Rafa Viana Fuhrer, reached out to me and other students to share some ideas to potentially transform the chemistry department into a more inclusive space. And through continued discussion, five of us um, later formed a group called Diversity and Equity in Chemistry, or DEC. And all of us had experienced the familiar uncomfortable feeling, which was a sense that we didn't belong, but we also shared a mutual desire to create community in STEM and make it a more equitable place. Um, our work in sharing our ideas in meetings with faculty, meeting panels on inclusive teaching, helping circulate and revise an open letter directed towards STEM departments, and creating an annual social justice seminar stems from taking the time and energy to listen. We listen first and foremost to other students who share ideas about the ways in which class material might be more digestible for them, or even ways in which they struggle to find off-campus opportunities um, or connect with their professors. So the four other students who are a part of DEC, um, that's Brian, Rafa, Rune, and Shreya, some of them are here today. Um, and I would like each of them to stand up right now so we can give them applause. have all done incredible work and I was so inspired, I am so inspired by their energy and wealth of ideas and really fortunate to work with them. So thank you guys. Um, my mother is a global citizen herself and has been an incredible role model for me. Um, as she's a doctor, she's always told me if you really listen to your patient in the first five minutes, they'll give you their diagnosis. And in the same way, I truly understand um, what we as DEC have to offer that could match the needs of the students. We have many conversations amongst ourselves about our experiences. We talk to underclassmen and even with students of other colleges. Everyone really wants to be understood. Everyone wants people to understand their experience. And we wanted not only be peers, but trustworthy mentors to all those who have been in our shoes. Um, these ideas allow me, as biology student representative, to engage with biology students on campus to understand what their ideal community might look like. So, as I was asked to serve on a committee to find a tenure track neurobiologist for McAllister, I would remember what students would tell me in meetings and advocate as best I could for the candidate that embodied their ideas. The experience in DEC also motivated me to step into other leadership roles for students on campus. As Sarah Noble, who's in the audience, also encouraged me to become, to apply to become a disability services peer mentor, I happily did. As Vivian Tran reached out to me about her vision to create a safe space for disabled BIPOC students, I was, able, I was eager to help her, and the BIPOC Disability Diaspora Collective was formed. As the Mixed Race Identity Collective began to take off, I wanted to connect to other students on campus, revel in our differences, and find joy in my experience as a multiracial woman. So I stepped into the role of co-facilitator there as well. These experiences have shown me the importance of community and the comfort it can bring people to know that there are others who share their experiences and if not, are willing to listen and are curious about their life stories. The opportunity to co-found DEC also allowed me to be an advocate for communities off campus. Soon after DEC was born, I conducted public health research for the Community University Healthcare Center, also known as COOC, on how to make care more accessible to the Somali population in the Twin Cities during the COVID-19 pandemic. A group of McAllister students from different disciplines, myself included, worked together to address the clinic's questions to the best of our ability 
conducting informational interviews with Cook staff and with members of organizations that serve Somali populations, such as the English Learning Center, to gain key insight into patient experiences at Cook and in particular COVID-19. We aim to understand the clinic's needs, but we also wanted to translate the clinic's questions into questions that could be well received and inspire conversation among community members. It was an incredibly challenging but rewarding experience to be able to draft a policy report with our recommendations that were gleaned from these individuals through our own research. This information was crucial for when I became a clinical research intern at Hennepin County Medical Center and conducted research that had the potential to influence teaching healthcare providers at a diverse urban hospital. This internship required careful attention um, to reading a patient's chart in EPIC, but also assessing the patient situation as they arrived at the emergency department. This attention to detail on a patient's disposition carried into my work as an EMT at McAllister through two organizations off campus um, and through two organizations off campus, like Tech and MedEvent Services in the Twin Cities area. So my personal vision for the future includes becoming a compassionate physician. I will always strive to be my patient's biggest advocate despite potential challenges with hospital administration. And through my research and care as a physician, I am eager to continue to listen and learn from those around me and under my care. I want to strengthen diversity, equity, and inclusion research in hospitals and utilize my interest in public health as well as emergency medicine. I strive to make patients and providers I interact with feel like they're included as, in my work as they will shape it. So I want to end by thanking those who nominated me for this award, including Melissa Fletcher, who has guided my work in disability services and beyond, Elizabeth Jansen for encouraging to share my voice in STEM, and Dilwani, as she has been an incredible mentor to me at McAllister. Um, and lastly, I want to thank all my friends and family for being big supporters of me and my work. So thank you all. achievements 
It is long and varied and really quite impressive. Uh, and that in his time here, he's fully embodied deep commitments to equity, justice, civic engagement, and academic excellence. I couldn't be more proud of him and to have the privilege of introducing him here tonight. So please help me welcome him. Today. I'm also thankful. I'm thankful for everyone who not only made this event possible, but also everyone who's made these larger experiences possible for Juan, Maya, me, and everyone else in this room who's who had the privilege of being recognized today. As much as we're being recognized for some of the work we've done, this event is a stronger recognition of the support, the compassion, and the faith of our community, our members, our friends and family, and our friends and family around us. So thank you. During my time at McAllister, I've been fortunate to be a part of environments that embrace diversity of identity, of thought, and action. I've also found people that are willing to constantly learn from each other and leave their comfort zones in the process. Although the idea of global citizenship encompasses many ideas and themes, at its core, being a global citizen involves a passion for equitable community change, to ensure that everyone moves forward together. The spaces that I've been in, whether the classes, student organizations, or professional experiences, have been formative in shaping how I think about and act in the world around me. Some of my most impactful experiences have been yeah, sorry, some of my most impactful experiences that have shaped my perspective about global citizenship have come from classes in the environmental studies department, classes like environmental classics and environmental history taught by the one for this ones. Um, these classes have encouraged me to think about communities in ways beyond my immediate experiences. Reading books like Robin Wall Kimmerer's Braiding Sweet Press introduced me to indigenous knowledge systems and the importance of actively getting back to nature. Additionally, learning about redlining and highways made me think deeper about the histories of inequity that underlie much of our built environment. Though they spoke to different aspects of the environment, my classes made me think critically about my relationship with land and with nature. Combined with ideas of environmental justice, these academic paths help me real these academic paths help me realize the issues that I care most about, issues of, of sustainability and equity in urban spaces. And the more I learn about cities and planning, the greater urgency I feel to contribute to equitable the greater urgency I feel to contribute to equitable solutions for issues like climate change and housing affordability. Over the past few years, I've been fortunate to realize those passions through real world experiences as well, um, thanks to the help of Shannon Brunette in the audience over there. Um, I've had the privilege of working with, with Shannon and an artist named Safety Jones and um, as a designer at an architecture firm in Minneapolis since my junior year. And I've had the privilege of working on a variety of affordable housing and brownfield development projects in Twin Cities in phases ranging from uh, design all the way to construction. And with the support of the firm's principals, I helped initiate a firm-wide effort to incorporate Native American design and land management considerations into our design process. Though it's still in the research and development phase, this initiative looks, involves looking through historical records to understand which indigenous, tribe, which indigenous tribes lived on the site earlier, and working with Dakota and Ojibwe organizations and artists to ID ways for a project to actively give back to nature and to indigenous peoples beyond a simple land acknowledgement. While I'm thankful for how receptive my firm's culture is to ideas of equitable development, I also felt more confident in taking those sorts of projects on because of my education at the College and in the Environmental Studies Department and applying everything that I've learned in ways that are accessible to me. Um, as an international student with no connection to the Twin Cities, it was admittedly hard, it was admittedly challenging for me to learn about and engage with local communities and cultures that are so drastically different from my own. However, in reaching out to indigenous, orga indigenous organizations, I realized the sense of community that exists in spaces of color and in the importance of using my positionality, whether as a South Asian, as a college student, or as a designer at an architecture firm. 
to contribute to better environments for everyone. In these efforts toward making communities more just, it's important to acknowledge the systems of support and knowledge that exist in the community itself, realizing that systemic change is more than an individual effort and that there is power in asking for help. In a similar vein, an experience that greatly contributed to my community involvement and understanding of the Twin Cities is my work with the Met Council that was made possible by Derek and our friends at the Civic Engagement Center. Um, and through off-campus student employment, I've been able to engage in projects related to climate change mitigation planning as well as metro region-wide um, in line with the justice efforts. We work with planners and foresters to develop a GIS application called Growing Shade. Um, and this project combines local stories and so it combines local stories with a mapping tool to help foresters and planners and advocacy groups and others generate reports based on variables like climate change, conservation, environmental justice, and public health at a range of scales, ranging from census block groups to the larger city itself. We then made it possible for these groups to create reports that told compelling stories about our communities. So you would be able to say with empirical certainty that communities of color, that communities of color around North Minneapolis or around Frogtown were experiencing hotter, temp hard, hotter temperatures in the summer than wealthier communities like the McAllister neighborhood. Um, advocating for change, whether it's in climate issues or in racial equity or anything else, is undoubtedly challenging. Systemic and personal barriers can be disheartening, but at the same time, the presence of those barriers point at the necessity for that change. Global citizenship involves recognizing global citizenship involves recognizing the challenges that confront you, but also not losing sight of the larger goal that sees the community become empowered, become safer, and become healthier for all people. Working with the Met Council for the past year, I've had the chance to be a part of conversations about urban planning and environmental justice frameworks at a government at a government and planning level. Learning from planners and foresters and policy makers about the opportunities for growth in terms of sustainability and equity in the cities. Importantly, these conversations don't end in Zoom calls, but they carry forward through policy plans and through implementation strategies and community partnerships that move our city closer to an equitable future. And while internships and school and, and, and classes have done a lot to shape me as a person, my fondest memories and my strongest understandings of community have been right here on campus through student organizations that have had the incredible privilege of being a part of and helping lead. Through opportunities for leadership in the SEGA, um, McAllister's South Asian Cultural Org, and Comactics, um, McAllister's Acapella Group, I learned how important it is to have spaces for identity and diversity and how important it is that those identities are celebrated in meaningful ways. In my work with Maseka, we developed new programming and outreach that included the voices and perspectives of students from the South Asian diaspora, a demographic that had historically felt less welcome in the organization. We also worked to educate ourselves in the larger campus community about cultural festivals and current events outside what was generally palatable to a white audience like McAllister. Along with other efforts, this helped establish Maseka as an inclusive community that celebrates South Asian heritage while acknowledging the nuances of our identities and the, diver and the diversity that informs larger social political issues in the region. I'm really proud of people that continue that work like the Tachi, the and Kashmir that are in the audience today. Um, in addition to my South Asian identity, another facet that has been integral to my time with Galster has been my passion for music. And through the Mavericks, McAllister's R&B Acapella Group will be able to concert tomorrow. <laughs> if you're so inclined to be there. Um, we fostered a welcoming creative environment that uplifted the music and voices of artists of color. Our rehearsals and performances created safe spaces for students of color at Mac and gave us the opportunity to become closer to one another while pushing ourselves creatively. I feel lucky to call my friends in Mavericks uh, my closest at McAllister. Um, sorry, Jerry. <laughs> um, as I look forward to what's next after my four years of Mac in Twin Cities, I know that I want to hold on to as much as I can from my social, academic, and professional experiences while learning as much as I can from the communities around me. After Mac, I'll be pursuing a master's degree in architecture, with which I hope to deepen my understanding of issues like homelessness, income inequity, and climate resilience, and how explore how we might apply various contexts in related from St. Paul to back home in India. Architecture and planning have historically been fields that ignored the voices of minority communities and the most vulnerable amongst us. 
and my chat with the counselor has exposed me to ways to meaning exposed me to ways to meaningfully engage with these communities and foster platforms where where these voices can be recognized, heard, and celebrated. After my, after my time at McAllister in graduate school, I see myself continuing to work for <coughs> sorry, continuing to work for and with marginalized communities, whether that's through affordable housing, equitable urban developments, or contributing to climate change policy making. In becoming an architect, I want to be a part of actionable solutions that make our communities more livable and sustainable for all people, and putting into practice everything that my McAllister experience has taught me. In a society that is increasingly interconnected, yet pervaded in social inequities, it's imperative to approach alleviating this, these issues with the lens of global citizenship. One that is informed by diversity and equity, one that confronts challenges with a hope for the future, and one that looks for collaboration and community as sources of strength. Again, I want to thank everyone who has made these experiences possible for me, who has enhanced and formed the perspectives that I have now, and the people who have Obviously, <laughs> so thank you as well. I also want to thank Dennis Michael Stead, who's in, who's in the back of the audience, for supporting me and being my family away from my family. Um, I couldn't have done any of this, or I wouldn't be here without any of you. So thank you. Good evening. My name is Eric Cobb, the director of International Student Programs. I use he, him pronouns. Um, one last congratulations to all the honorees tonight. For Juan, Maya, and Alex, a uh, little FYI, I helped a couple students connect with award recipients from the both the Gold Citizenship and International Award before 2012 this morning to kind of see how their global citizenship is going. So expect that in the 2030s to be coming. <laughs> <laughs> relationship doesn't end. Uh, some of those who are being contacted to work for the UN, two are in higher ed, one's a movie star, and um, was the work for U.S. Council as an embassy since you graduated from Harvard. So, we'll be talking to you today. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, this is one of our more um, easy events to put on, largely because Meg Thorson is uh, yes. here. Outstanding staff award at some point. She boosts your morale. She's intelligent. She's affable. All I gotta do is hold your coffee at the IGC, walk a few meters, and there she is. Um, lastly, but not least, make sure I got it all. Um, there is food, um, particularly boxes in the boardroom. Um, that concludes our program. Paul's up here for more photographs if you'd like to take it with them. <laughs> <laughs>